Welcome to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. Hey everybody, Jay Shalansky here. Welcome back to the new incarnation of the Fifth Trooper Podcast. We're calling it Wasting Time with the Fifth Trooper. So basically what this new cast is going to be is me, Jay, uh, on a permanent basis. And I'm going to be rotating co-hosts, doing interviews and all kinds of other stuff. But we're mostly going to be talking about Legion in general. Um, I'm going to try to start at the beginning again. I mean, listen, we have a brand new game. And I think a lot of folks out there are going to want to want to learn how to play this new game. And and I'm going to be here for it. So I'm very excited uh, to get this started. I'm very excited for you guys to be here and uh, talking about Legion again, which is going to be amazing. So first thing, real quick, before we start, just want you guys to know that there's a Kickstarter going on right now uh, with Game Toppers. I did all the design work for the new mats. We have all kinds of different new mats, sizes, styles, artwork, uh, and then they do these game toppers that go on top of your current table at home, whether it's your kitchen or dining room table, and uh, yeah, you could just set up games now and and pack the, ta- the table topper away, the game topper away, and uh, I really recommend go join up on the Kickstarter uh, and support that. Those Game Toppers is a really great company, and I was very excited to do uh, the artwork and all the design for it, so Uh, Please go support that. Uh, Next topic on my agenda here to talk about is Game Uplink and Legion HQ. I know a lot of you out there are bummed about the news that we're no longer supporting those and keeping those active. And I just want to take a moment here and kind of explain the reason behind that. Listen, uh, having software and supporting software is a very difficult task, especially when that software doesn't inherently generate any any revenue. So there was no money really in either of those softwares, and it was just hard to keep on top of things. You know, it's very expensive to keep those things hosted, uh, keeping developers going and, and, and on top of all these changes that are happening all the time. Um, and it was just something that honestly, we didn't have the wherewithal or ability to keep up with. Uh, it has nothing to do with our our uh, view on legion or the community it's just something unfortunately from a business perspective we just couldn't keep up on and you know so so we couldn't support those anymore but very very excited to keep going uh and supporting legion in different ways and the community in different ways and you'll see that there's going to be some more changes to the fifth trooper over the next couple months uh this obviously being one me being back on the podcast for legion and uh much much more and, you know, I'm just really, really excited uh, to keep going with you guys. And especially now that, like, Legion's basically brand new. Uh, this is an exciting time, especially for me. I, I, I'm uh, I'm going to get into it here. But, you know, I'm very um, excited about the changes and, uh, and playing Legion again, which is great, you know. So uh, other than that, like I said, you're going to see a lot of new changes to the 5th Trooper, which some are exciting. Some probably won't be as exciting for you just because we're changing and change is difficult but uh yeah we're we're coming back uh and making making some focuses back on content and and creating really really top-notch content for you guys which i'm very excited about uh, so yeah, so this first episode, uh, I'm going to dive in, uh, not not very deep, but just kind of a high level um, into the new Legion, um, however you want to call that, you know, and uh, I'm very excited to talk about that. So today's episode will just be a high level flyover of the changes and my thoughts on them. Then as I continue this series, uh, we will we'll dive in a little bit deeper. I'll have other people on talking about things uh as far as legion concerned my goal is to have other guests and co-hosts on to maybe talk about other games briefly you know and and hopefully the majority of these podcasts will be um will be focused on legion but i also want to introduce you guys to other topics and and ideas out there and games and kind of like um back at the beginning of the fifth trooper uh podcast when we had guests on when we did interviews uh we talked about other games we did all kinds of stuff you know and i really want to get back to my roots uh with that where that's concerned and hopefully bring in some familiar faces some not so familiar faces and uh get you guys just uh energized right and back into it so number one 
new Star Wars Legion. I'm over the moon about this, frankly. Um, I know that everybody feels that way, but maybe I can sell you on why. Uh, I think it's great. This is honestly uh for me a move towards marvel crisis protocol and maybe for those of you that don't uh support us on patreon or really listen to our other content you'll know i've been super hyped on marvel crisis protocol i play protocol all the time i love that game it's a great game um it's it's just it's a mind-blowing game, and I, I highly recommend you guys check it out. Actually, on our YouTube channel, we have a podcast that I do called WTFMCP, where I'm doing like a beginner's guide, getting you used to uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. I highly recommend checking it out if you guys want to get into Protocol, or you don't know what Marvel Crisis Protocol is, and you're looking to know more about it. That's a great way to start. And so basically, you know, Listen, with these the new the new rounds, how they're doing victory points, the new objective system, um, moving towards that Marvel Crisis Protocol um, uh, style of gameplay, which I, I think is going to be much better for the longevity of this game overall. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm you know I I love Marvel Crisis Protocol. I love that games can can take over an hour but sometimes they don't you know sometimes they're quicker and i think that's okay it's okay if a game is quick uh sometimes marvel crest protocols games can end in round two or three it's just part of the game and i think that's good about the game right is that it kind of adds this tension to it um that i that i enjoy about the game um I'm really excited for Legion because I think it's going to be a faster, lighter game. Um, that makes it way more accessible, I think, to the market, right? And so, for instance, if you were to go to an Adepticon or a Gen Con and see like these really like sweaty, uh, you know, three hour Legion games and somebody, you know, is talking to someone about Legion and it's like, yeah, this is Star Wars Legion and they see the minis and they're all like jacked about the minis and they and they want to get in and then all of a sudden um like how long does a game take and you're like yeah like three hours man and how many do you play in a day like three or four it takes forever and so you know i th i think this is going to allow for more accessibility to newer players i really do uh i'm really really excited about that um movement templates the way the new way of moving so you know you notch on the one side and before you would go in the little half circle on the other side well now it's just any on the tip of the movement template for those of you that don't know this is a marvel crisis protocol thing um i find it just such a better system um because it, it kind of takes out a lot of the like making sure your movement is more exacting and it's just kind of makes that a faster kind of system where hey i'm just gonna put it at the edge of the ruler i'm just gonna move right and so it's just faster it's just easier and frankly the last legion tournament that i was at like last month or whatever um i had to keep correcting myself because i was doing that because i'm playing so much marvel crisis protocol um so that's good for me uh now i don't have to think about it so yeah that's, that's really great um I'm very excited about that uh, and not having to think about that anymore and it just being the same for both both the games that I love to play. Um, you know, some of the complaints that I've heard is that the games are over by round three people that are just playing it. I think that's just for now. Uh, when I started playing MCP, that's how it was for me as well because I didn't fully yet understand the entire game and I was really like running my stuff in there like my you know captain america and hulk i was just like full bore running them at my opponent and they were just getting slaughtered and that happens right and even even today as i've really come into my own as a as an mcp player that can happen from time to time where round two round three it's it's over right and th there's nothing wrong with that you know, I think it just makes these games more dynamic. It makes them more interesting. You know, I feel like too, and and I'm different. You know, I know I'm different than than some of you out there and some of the more competitive players. But I honestly don't want to spend three hours for playing one round of a game. Um, that was my hardest thing with Legion. Right? It's just like, dude, 
this thing's going to be forever. And I just can't, I just don't have the patience for that anymore as a player. And I don't think I ever had the patience for that. Um, you know, since we started, it was just something I dealt with because I loved the game. Um, but it was not something that I ever uh, loved about the game. And I think for those of you that have been with us long enough and have listened to me ramble about Legion for the last six years, um, you know that that was never something I supported or was was happy with. Uh, I not not great. And so now I think with this new system the games are just going to be faster overall um even if they go to round five right i just think it's going to be a faster gaming experience which i think is good for all of us um and it's just going to take some getting used to understanding like the game uh the new objectives you know and i think anybody who is being like oh i've played three games and and i'm i'm an expert on this now and telling you it's awful they they just they don't know what they're talking about i think you have to get in you know i i think it's four months five months of playing this and like understanding the rules and and like really getting into it it's really going to allow everybody to kind of understand what this really is um and I, I'm not saying I understand what it really is right now, but just from what I've seen and my understanding of everything, um, I'm I'm very excited and I think it's gonna be great for the for everybody. Um, maybe not for everybody. There's gonna be some some sour pusses out there, but uh yeah, I mean it you know, it is what it is. Uh let's see, yeah. So I know some people out there are saying they don't like the objectives, and um I really would ask that you just kind of hang on i think we really don't know how to play them right now um i think that it's a new format it's a new way of playing the game i think a lot of us are going to have hang-ups on how the game used to be played and we're going to struggle with this new system um and i think that happens whenever you go to any new game right and i think if you really approach this in your mind and in your body and in your soul that this is this is a brand new game you've never seen anything like this before and you need to kind of just like focus on that part and say hey i'm starting a new game uh you'll you'll get used to it and you'll start understanding and seeing through the matrix a little bit and seeing the differences you know and and any new game is tough like that you know whether it's marvel crisis protocol or whether you're going into aos or or old world or 40k you gotta get used to the rules and like and and what the what they are so you know this is a brand new game that's just how you have to think about it in your in your head um and just attack it that way and i i think overall you'll be happier with the results um and and you'll be happier playing um you know i think the other positive is that uh there's just so many more models on the table which is always a plus uh i love having models on the table i love painting models uh so so this is going to be great um i i really like the addition of like adding more minis to your unit you know with that upgrade i i think that's super cool um i don't know i don't know how often you would do it uh you know and i think that's dependent on list uh and faction and all that but i yeah i think i think it's a good it's just a cool addition um to it i like that they went back and you know we made a lot of updates to the original stuff you know and i think there was some confusion from what i've seen with the community and the fact that like People are saying, oh, they didn't update this or they didn't know why didn't they do this or why didn't they change that? And listen, they're going to. They said they've got another dump uh, coming at Adepticon, right? So I really think what they're doing is they're testing the waters. They're putting everything out there to see how the community does with it. And then uh, that allows them to make adjustments. Like I think I just saw today, uh, which is Friday the 26th. I think I just saw today they just published... A new thing saying that they are doing um they just made updates to all the faction the battle forces and the rules and stuff right i don't know what they are i didn't read them yet but like that's gonna happen right they're gonna continually make updates and it's good it's good for the game we need we needed something new i mean it was it was stalling right uh and and just kind of like not growing as a game and not uh attracting new players as much as i think it could have been and so yeah i, th I think overall i'm um, i'm really excited about that uh oh I, I wrote a note to myself that just says as a heavy player i love that my atsds can score very nice uh yeah i mean 
including all units in the scoring process uh, is amazing, right? And so now you don't feel like you have any, you know, I, I think we found a place for those units, especially when it came to heavies and stuff like that. You know, we were uh, using them for fire supporting or, or not, you know, not traditionally in the keyword sense, but just in the like, you know, using them to like block off flanks, stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and, and so now that they can be active in the scoring process, I think it's really good. I'm excited about it. My ATSTs can now score. Clearly, I wrote that as my note. Um, I do like the new objective secondary advantage system. Uh, I just think it allows for so many more options in the future. Uh, and this is something I've been wanting, right? I think maybe when I was on Scoundrels, what was a couple of weeks ago now, uh, when I was talking about the Kickstarter on the second half of that podcast, we talked about what my wishes were for the game and and having multiple um abilities to get victory points was like one of my top top things and i got it you know and i'm very excited about that i think there's so much so many options and opportunities for that moving forward that's really great um and you know it may be there's a small pool now to play with because they just released it but my my bet is there'll be more at adopticon and in the future and i just think it's it's just a it's a, a much better way of approaching that system. You know, I think the old the old system was getting dry, you know. Um, yeah, the print and play. Listen, I know a lot of you are going to hate this, but I really think it was the best way to do it. I, I really do, because I think they needed to kind of get a pulse on the community, what the community wanted, uh, what the community thought they needed to play um, a lot of these different scenarios because listen in testing um you can only get so much testing done uh before you have to kind of almost abandon it right for release and so there's only so much testing you can do behind closed doors with a closed pool of people so kind of opening it up to the larger group uh allows for all these different changes uh there's going to be you know forums rules questions there's going to be all this extra stuff that'll really help them develop further and make changes and make updates and so i i think between now and adepticon we're going to see a lot more updates and a lot more changes to the rules as as the community finds things out you know and i think that's okay i, I think it's a cool way of doing it um it just it makes sense um, I think it makes it accessible for everybody, you know, because especially in this economy, like even if they had put out a core set or a pack and announced it, like they would have made money. We would have all bought it for sure. But this way allows you to play it without making any more hard uh, monetary commitments to the game or, you know, that maybe you don't have right now. And so you're just able to print play and go right and do it. I, I think that's. I think that's great. I think it was a great way to do it. I know a lot of people are upset about it, um, but I'm all for it. Um, I think the downside with that, though, like, you know, I know I've been pretty hyped and positive. I think one of the downsides, honestly, if I was to give any criticism, isn't even of the game changes, but just kind of the light switch way that they did it, where like, you know, d d today it was the old way and then the next day it was the new way. Um I would have liked to have seen them maybe put it up on the website in addition to keeping the old rules and then just putting an effective date on it, like saying, hey, effective um, October 1st. These are the new rules. So any games or any tournaments or GTs or anything like that after October 1st should be playing the new rules. But until October 1st, the old rules are all fine. Um, I, I just would have liked to see that. You know, I think I think that would have been would have been great. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I said, I'm really hyped about all these changes. I'm really excited about the new sculpts, the new units. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm net positive on this whole thing. Honestly, I mean, it, it really even convinced me to get back into the podcast, uh, and go back to Legion podcasting, honestly. So, so well done to them. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about this and, and, and getting going and, and in future podcasts, I'm going to break down, uh, and get into specific new rules. And we're just going to walk through it from like a beginner's perspective. Like, all right, you're just playing Legion for the first time. Cause 
because technically we all are now. And we'll just go through rule by rule and I'll try to explain them to the best of my ability and uh, give my feedback and thoughts on them. And, and that's just kind of how we're going to do the podcast. Um, you know, I'm also going to be breaking up the second half of the podcast into different segments. Uh, today's segment, which I'm going to do in a few minutes, is uh, talk about games that I'm playing that aren't Legion uh, that I think you might want to get into um, and and promoting those. And then hopefully I can have other guests and co-hosts on that'll do the same thing in the future. Ideally, we'll keep these podcasts around the 20 to 30 minute mark. If we have to go over, if we have some exciting guests or, or news or or want to talk about something that we're really passionate about, we may hit the hour mark. But, you know, I think the 20 to 30 minutes, a real sweet spot. But yeah, uh, very excited about all the Legion changes. I'm very excited to be back talking to you guys about Legion. And uh, I'm going to be writing some blog posts as well on the blog about Legion and about... Um, about Marvel Crisis Protocol, and so I hope you join us there. Uh, and yeah, so let's get into our next segment, which is Jay is Playing. Welcome to Jay is Playing. Uh, this is going to be a little segment that I do that talks about other games or it could be anything, you know, I think it'll mostly be focused on games that I'm playing right now or new things that I've tried out that I'm really like excited about and hopefully introduce you to other things and, and other passions. So right now, today, I'm going to talk about a game called Foundations of Rome. Foundations of Rome is uh, this really cool board game by a company called Arcane Wonders. Um, and basically, it's a city building board game. So basically what the game does is it puts you into the role of an architect and you're competing to own land in Rome and build these magnific magnificent structures. Um, you can build all kind of like fountains and foundries and, and, you know, all this stuff to like increase your renown as like an architect in Rome. Um, you know, there's the game has so foundations of rome is kind of like the main game and it has all these like crazy detailed like little minis that it comes with that are like the the buildings that you're building as an architect um and it's like such a huge game uh i know that they're coming out with another game that's going to not have the minis that'll be more like punch because this game is is relatively expensive i believe it was in the like the like if you want the minis um it, it starts in like the two or three hundred dollar mark uh but they're gonna come out with a lower version of that but i honestly highly recommend getting it if you have the money to spare uh and you can get it so basically how it works is on your turn, you can purchase a new lot, uh, a building, uh, a, a new, you know, or a new building. Uh, you can build a new building, sorry, uh, and, and share some space. Uh, or you could collect income from the buildings that you have. Like there's apartments, there's, you know, markets, there's all kinds of different stuff. Um, and then you're basically collecting victory points, which they call glory points. And at the end of the end of each round, you collect these based on stuff like population and commerce. Um, you can gain glory from like civic buildings that score not only based on the building itself, but the, but your buildings around it and your opponent's buildings around it. Um, it's really quick to set up, really easy to learn. Uh, I, I had somebody uh, teach me it and like within like 10 minutes and I was off to the races. So if you play games before any type of game, it's very easy to understand and, and move. Um, but yeah, so, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is kind of give games ratings here at the end of each one of these games play. So I'm going to give foundations of Rome. Uh, this will be in a star rating out of five stars. I'm going to give it four and a half stars. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite games that I've played in the last two years. Um, highly recommend it uh the the company um arcane wonders is a is a wonderful company and i'm just very very excited about this game uh so check it out foundations of rome uh and that is jay's playing
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on Wasting Time with the Fifth Trooper. I'm Jay Shalansky. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so glad we could be talking again and doing podcasts. Uh, look forward to every week. We'll be doing this again and uh, we'll see you out there. Thanks for playing and, and thanks for listening. Join us next week for another edition of the Fifth Trooper podcast.